Hello and welcome, my name is Xander. I will be your instructor through this tutorial. Now this tutorial is actually part of a whole course which you can access the first stages for free here on YouTube. Now in this tutorial, I might mention resources and other tutorials. Do check out the link in the video description which will take you to the playlist and also there will be a link to the resources so that you can access and follow along here on YouTube. Now, if you like this course, you found it useful and you want to take that next step, you can find this course over at Udemy. All the links to the resources can be found in the video description. Now, don't forget also subscribe to the channel for weekly promotions, discounts and free course giveaways. As we saw in the previous tutorial, we have a database that we are going to be building. So we now need to convert that design into SQL code. In this course, we are going to primarily use a command line interface. For that, with Postgres SQL, we use the PSQL, which is the Postgres SQL's command line interface, which is going to allow us to execute SQL commands and interact with our Postgres SQL database directly from the terminal. At the end of this module, I will show you how to interact with the database using software. But like I said, we are going to primarily use the command line interface to interact with our database. The decision to use the command line interface in this course is simply because I think it is the most effective way of learning SQL. Before we start this tutorial, do make sure that you have seen the setup tutorial at the start of this course where you have installed Docker desktop. You have a Docker Compose file created in preparation to then start a new Postgres SQL container. Now, as this is the first tutorial in this course, I will quickly take you through the steps needed to get started. Now, making the assumption you have Docker desktop installed. This code you can see here is available at the end of the module. So all these example or all the code that we use in this module is available. So you can work through this step by step as we work through. I do recommend, although the code is already written, that you do type out yourself because that's going to be the primary way of you actually learning the code, actually typing it out yourself rather than lifting it in. In this course, I will lift code in, copy and paste it in. Sometimes I will actually type it out to further or better explain something as and when it's needed. Right, so assuming you have Docker Desktop installed, first open up the terminal and now we need to start Docker Compose. So for that Docker, uh, Docker, Docker, Docker Compose, and then we're going to use up and then the D flag. So everything is working behind the scenes rather than uh, congesting our terminal. Go ahead and do that. And it looks like we have the database running. Now I already have the database running. If you do, you're going to receive this error here. The fact that the container already exists. So either way, that should now be ready. If you head over to Docker desktop, we should have a container started. It should be green and we should then be good to start. So first up, let's just make sure that our Docker container is running. There it is, uh, Docker PS. What we need to be able to imagine here is that this Docker container is running within the Docker environment. It's like having another computer inside of our machine. So we're going to connect to it. And then when we're inside of the machine, we can then go ahead and use PSQL. That's the command line interface for interacting with our Postgres databases within this container. And from there, we can then start to run our SQL code. Now, there are plenty of different ways of working here. If I select the container and open up the uh, command line here, I can perform the same commands as I do in Visual Studio Code in this window here because we are in the same environment at that point. But we're going to use Visual Studio Code because that's where all our code is. It's going to hopefully make it easier for you to follow along. Right, so we need to essentially log in or access our container. And we do that through docker ex exec. We use the IT flags. So here exec command is used to run a new command in an existing running container. The IT, so these are two options combined to tell 
Docker that I stands for interactive. It keeps the standard input open so we can interact with the container in our terminal. And T stands for TTY. So this allocates a, a pseudo terminal, if you like. So you get a terminal like experience within our terminal. So <laughs> simply put, we're connecting to our Docker container and we are opening, opening up a terminal here in Visual Studio Code, which represents a terminal inside of our Docker container. I'm not too sure if that um, simplifies it, but we then go ahead and give us a name of infantry DB. So that's the name or the ID of the running container that we want to connect to. And then SH, this is the important part here. This is a command uh, that we want to run inside the container. So SH stands for shell. So we want to open up a shell in our container. And there we go. So we now have access. We're now inside of our Docker container. So we're now inside of our Docker container. So we can now run PSQL, which is Postgres specific. This is the command line we want to start so that we can interact with our database. And then we use the U flag, capital U, to denote we want to connect to our database. And then we supply the database user. Now remember here in Docker Compose, we set up our user and password as Postgres Postgres. And we did also create a, a database, but importantly, this is the user. So that's why I'm using Postgres here because that's the user of our database. So I press enter there and you can now see I'm inside of the database or I'm connected to our Postgres database. So the first task, let's go ahead and use the backslash S, oh, backslash L, sorry which is going to list all of the databases. Now, notice here that there's a whole bunch of information and I have to press enter, enter to show me more. And you can roughly see here that there is an inventory database. Uh, I could expand this a little bit more. So that's the, the first part is the name and then the owner. So the name and then the owner of the database and so on. That's irrelevant at the moment, but we can see here a list of all the databases we have and I keep needing to press enter because it says more there's more information if I want to cancel that or come out I can press Control and C on my Mac keyboard it's going to be slightly different on Windows so here on the Mac I use or press Control and C and then that takes me back to my Postgres where we were previously before we run the command now, if we don't want all this additional information, alternatively, we can run what will be essentially our first SQL statement. Now, we don't necessarily need to know anything about this statement. Um, we can simply just copy and paste this in. Do make sure that you include the semicolon at the end because that tells Postgres it's the end of our line or our instruction. So that's going to be required. So if I press that, you can see that that would just provide us an overview of all the databases that we currently have without any of any of the additional information. Right, so here in the Mac, I can press Command K and that's just going to clear the screen. If you're on Windows, you probably type in clear, for example, to clear everything. And that's just going to make it easier for you to uh, start fresh when we're running different commands and so on. Now, what's important to know at this point is that in Postgres SQL's interactive terminal, you will see different prompts based upon the state of the session. So here we have equals Postgres equals hashtag and dash hashtag. So here you can see that in our terminal, we're currently in, for example, equals hashtag, but we will move into the other mode, if you like. So if I run this command here, notice that now we have dash hashtag. This will make a little bit more sense potentially as we start to learn SQL. But what's important is that when we start running an SQL statement, we need to be in the equals hashtag because typically when we are in the dash hashtag, this prompt will appear when we're in the middle of typing a multi-line command. So some commands will stretch multiple lines and this will allow us to actually create those multi-line statements using the dash hash. So this is actually telling me here, dash hash, that I haven't maybe ended the previous statement. And I end the statement by using the semicolon. So if I use that now, it's going to run the previous statement because here I'm in this multi-line statement. So there we go. So I've used the 
uh, semicolon. That's finished the previous statement or statements in multiple lines. The command then runs and you can see that we then return to equal hashtag. So sometimes we can forget to run the semicolons and then we try to type some other commands. It doesn't work. So first of all, just double check you're in the right mode and use the semicolon if you want to return back to the equals hashtag, the default prompt. So make sure before you run any commands, you're in the correct mode. In this case, the equal hashtag. So this is the main PSQL prompt that tells us we're ready to execute SQL queries. Now, sometimes the terminal here, I find tricks you and it doesn't show equals hashtag. And I just need to press here on the Mac command and K or on Windows press clear in order to get back to this equal hashtag if the semicolon doesn't work. So it will probably also be good to know how to exit the SQL PSQL terminal. So for that, if I type in exit, that would take us back. You can see here we have the slash hashtag. So I'm now back in the terminal of the container and I can press, press exit or I run exit again. And now I'm actually in back to my computer's terminal. So I do recommend you familiarize yourself with this process entering the terminal, exiting, and have a look at some of the different prompts run through this script, just to familiarize yourself enough to make it nice and comfortable when we start to work through the other tutorials in this module and other modules, it's just gonna make it easier for you to follow along. In this tutorial, we learned how to connect to our Postgres database, which is running in a Docker container. We learned that in order to interact with our database, we first need to enter the Postgres SQL's terminal, interactive terminal, the PSQL. And we saw from there, we can run SQL commands and execute queries.